And Adam Kucharski joins me right now. Adam, what a timely book. It's hard to think of a more timely book uh, because really our world right now is being shaped by kind of two outbreaks. There's the outbreak of the virus, coronavirus, and also the outbreak of misinformation and political information surrounding it. And it's all converging around the face mask. Can you, can you help us understand why something as simple as a face covering has become so controversial? I think one of the elements is, is certainly early on in the outbreak, it was it was kind of uncertainty around you know what the virus was, what the virus was doing, and and certainly from a scientific point of view, if you have that uncertainty, very kind of confident new information will come in to fill it, and often that that information will have some some issues and will have some rumours. I think now though we are seeing a lot of things really kind of play into those to those kind of debates, and you know unfortunately these kind of situations where they're there is uncertainty and, and people want um, something to kind of latch on to. That's where, you know, people who are perhaps manipulating or putting disruptive stories into the mix, you know, really can thrive. So why does misinformation, which is so attractive when you find it online, you want to share it right away. Why does it catch fire? And now that it has ca caught fire, how do you stop it? How do you how do you counteract it? I think there's a couple of features um, which almost train us to, to value misinformation. Um, and that's, you know, you can trace that right back to the kind of quite, quite fundamental human properties that we value information that's new because, you know, we think it's going to tell us something we didn't know before. So by definition, if something's false, it's, it's going to be information that we haven't come across. Um, there's also evidence that information that can trigger quite fundamental emotions, so things like anger, disgust, uh, you know, really can, can spread further than information that perhaps doesn't stimulate that kind of a response. I think one of the main things to be aware of is just that that process of how these things work. That often when we see something online that angers us, you know, we'll want to engage with it and reply. But all you're doing is getting those amp uh, those algorithms to amplify it and actually help that contagion. Yeah, you're in the forecasting business professionally for pandemics. The the, the coronavirus has been challenging to forecast in America in particular. We've seen our graphics look very different from those in Europe. What is it about this country that makes it challenging for people in your line of work? I think one of the, the huge challenges is just how quickly you know, behavior and policies change during this epidemic. You know, I think most of us are familiar with things like weather forecasting. And obviously, if you're pessimistic about the weather, that won't change what the weather does. But epidemics, you know, if, if situation data comes in that suggests we've got a problem and, and people change behavior, if, you know, if governors and states change their policies, you're going to see a very different outbreak because of it. So I think really trying to work out exactly what cases will look like in different areas in, in two, three months time is, is incredibly difficult. But there, is there something about America itself that makes it difficult to forecast? I, I feel as though the virus has brought out some of the best and worst qualities of us as a country, and one of those qualities being independence, a, a certain skepticism and unwillingness to uh, listen to received wisdom. Can you factor that in when you're looking at how this is going to grow or not grow? I think it's it, there's more data emerging on kind of how people respond to this. I think early on it's it's enormously challenging because it, you know, we just haven't shut populations down on this scale really since the 1918 flu. But I think that issue of, of kind of trust and independence is an important one. If you look at Asian countries, you know, in Taiwan they're putting very strict quarantines. You're almost kind of electronic fences in, in, in Korea, having access to credit card data to to do um, contact tracing, and that's not been implemented in other countries in the same way because I think there are you know, really that focus on kind of individual freedoms and, and it's much harder to, in some cases, p persuade people to adhere to what are really quite disruptive measures. If you talk yeah. about lockdowns or getting people to stay at home, you know, that's a big disruption to daily life. All right, Adam. Well, uh, could you peer into the future for us and tell me, how does this end? I think uh, really uh, we're looking you know, for a situation where we've got a vaccine um, because at the moment, you know, the, the, the way the countries are keeping it under control, are keeping their health systems from being overwhelmed, is by this incredibly disruptive social distancing. You know, some countries have got it down locally, places like New Zealand, but then obviously have to keep borders really restricted to prevent cases coming in. So I think ultimately we want a situation where there's enough immunity within the population that we don't have to do all these really disruptive changes to our routine. Um, but I think getting there without a vaccine uh, and avoiding a situation like New York or, or Italy is going to be very difficult. Yeah, and when a vaccine arrives, there's a question of how quickly people will take it. So do you have a sense of when, Adam, in the, in the final 30 seconds here? I think optimistically, you know, if we can have something early next year, but I think we have to be aware that, that it might not be a perfect vaccine. And as you say, it might not be one that, that everyone takes up straight away. Yeah, and then we'll be back in the situation we are in now with a double outbreak, the virus, and then misinformation around things related to the virus, including a vaccine.
Adam Kucharski, thank you very much. The book Rules of Contagion is on sale right now. It'll help you understand your world.